sidetracked off a supply run. Talion finds himself with a fugitive sitting in the co-pilot seat. Granted, it's of his own making, and we can't forget about the pirate gang bearing down on the Ektikisi as they break orbit. If he can't outrun them, perhaps he can try hiding in the Maelstrom. We'll just pick right back up where we left off with Talion and Brennan. Now, Talion's ship, uh, the um, Ektikisi, is kind of breaking orbit at this point, and I think he's probably going at a little bit kind of a slower rate of uh, kind of ascension out into the into space, because uh, I think that's a way to kind of um, keep the, uh, the planetary guard uh, kind of from being able to find him. I think coming at a, clower, a slower trajectory is gonna kind of be one of the things to do that. Now we can't forget though that we do have this issue that from the very end of the last roll that we made in the last episode, uh, that the pirates are definitely going to find our uh, intrepid adventurers. There was a couple of things um, that I think then that I've been thinking about uh, in between uh, after the last session is, are the pirates going to be after then Talion because of his cargo, or are they going to be after him because of Brennan? So in, in, in a sense, it's kind of which cargo are they going to be coming after him for? Um, and I think that it is, well, let's ask the first question, are they coming after him uh, for Brennan? I think that that's going to be something that is a 50-50, so let's give it a shot and see what we come up with. Uh, 65, so that is a yes, they're coming after Brennan. Now, are they also coming after him because of the cargo? I think because we got a, a yes on the previous answer, I'm gonna say it's unlikely, not that it's impossible, but that it is something that's going to be unlikely that they're coming for him for that reason. So we're looking for a 76 or greater. So are they after him for both things or just because of Brennan? 76, 83, yes. Okay, so whatever it is, because we don't know yet what it is that Talion has picked up, plus they're also after Archer. Uh, excuse me, also after uh, Brennan. So uh, Talion then is breaking orbit uh, and is kind of moving in towards the um, uh, to Pinnacle Station to kind of drop off Brennan and kind of prepare on his way to kind of get things going. And so he's beginning the process then of kind of moving in that direction. He's going a little bit serendipitously to kind of make sure that no one thinks he's doing anything improper. Um, but before he knows it then, um, he is going to receive a message then uh, from uh, the pirates who have come after him. I think then probably the best way to do that, to kind of keep them a little bit more ominous uh, beforehand, is he's gonna start off then by uh, receiving a message from them. Uh, so there's no voice, there's no video, it's just purely a message from them. Ektikisi, stop. You have cargo that we want, stop. Prepare to be boarded, stop. Okay. I think then what Talion's first instinct is, is when he hears cargo, he's going to be thinking then that they're after then the goods that he has picked up. And that's something that he definitely needs. It's not a question of any loyalty to Brennan at this point. So when he's not thinking in that line, so he's only thinking in terms of uh, the cargo that he has just picked up from Brennan. So I think in that sense, he is definitely again going to try to make a run for it. Um, and I think then probably his best bet is trying to head towards Pinnacle Station because uh, they might have some weaponry to kind of be able to fight off then these pirates as they're coming in. But at the same time though, he still wants to keep a low profile. I think that in that case, no, he's gonna try to head towards the Maelstrom, an area with some uh, kind of uh, gravitational eddies, uh, a lot of debris is kind of in it. So he's gonna try to head over there and trying to hide his way out. So he's gonna try to make a run for it, I think is the best thing to do. So his first in action is going to be He's trying to avoid combat. Um, so I don't want to quite go into the combat moves with that one yet. Um, so let's go ahead and, well, it wouldn't be set of course, so that's following known routes. So let's go then with explore waypoint, which is diversion from expedition um, to examine some phenomenon. I think that's probably the best one we will kind of want to go through here. So uh, we are then doing an exploration move, exploring a waypoint. Uh, so we want to, okay, we need to divert from x uh, roll plus wits. Okay, so uh, wits is not one of his best suits. He has a plus one. Uh, now we do have a plus one momentum as there as well. Our health is at three, our spirit is at five, and our supply is at five. So we have a plus one though. Uh, let me check though something on his ship. Um, your arm multi-purpose is suited for just alert. You can comfortably transport several people, have space for cargo. When you advance, you may spend experience. Okay, so there's nothing gained then specifically by the ship itself. So we have the plus one of the wits, and let's see what happens. And ooh, 
that is not a good roll to begin with. That is definitely a miss. So uh, on a miss, you encounter an immediate hardship or threat, you must pay the price. Okay, so I think then probably what's going to happen is, well, first off, we will lose momentum, I think, on that. Um, but I think that's what's going to happen is the pirates definitely see that he's making a break for it, and that is something that they are used to seeing. And so they have then uh, kind of triggered some sort of, uh, of trap then for him to go into. Now, um, question is, though, what is that trap going to kind of look like? Let's ask the oracle about that. So the trap is going to be a 23 um, and a 60. So 23 and a 60 is a communicate uh, peace, communicate peace. With the communicate one, I was thinking immediately, because um, remember we had the issue of him having lost his um, um, communicator earlier and he wasn't able to find it. Um, but communicate peace then. Ah, let's take peace in a little bit more of a broader sense. Okay, so because as I had said in the previous episode, um, is that the problem then, or one of the main things why he was using then the communication device is because it was directly then kind of tied to in his ship. So I think then they are going to be using kind of a, um, uh, kind of a carrier wave over his communication signals, kind of a back door into a ship and trying to then shut his power down. Okay, so that I think is going to, to be the thing that's going to be happening. Now, he's going to have an opportunity to try to fight against that, of course. Uh, and so we are going to, um, we are going to react under fire, so we're acting to avoid danger or overcome an obstacle. So, uh, um, so we're in pursuit, fleeing or dodging, getting back into position. So let's then roll plus edge. Okay, so roll plus edge. His edge is a two. All right, so let's see how he does on this one. Okay, uh, that is an eight. Okay, so that is a weak hit. All right, a weak hit. Uh, but on a weak hit, then. Um, you succeed but face a troublesome cost. Make a suffer move, uh, minus one, you stay in a bad spot. Okay, okay, so what we have then is I think then over here will kind of be kind of the corner of the uh, the maelstrom. Uh, uh, then we have the Ectikisi is beginning the process of trying to get over there with the pirates kind of hot in pursuit. So that's kind of where we're at at this point. Okay, um, now we did make progress uh, previously on our track because of our weak hit. Uh, so with escaping the pirates, uh, we do make some progress. Um, but we are still in a bad spot. Okay, I think then at that point then, um, the pirate's definitely gonna be able to tell that their um, attempt to kind of invade then the, uh, the communication device and kind of have a back door into the system is gonna be something that failed. Uh, so they are going to try to take out the engine. So they're gonna fire then uh, their, their lasers then towards and try to take out the engines of the Ektikisi. Uh, and so he is going to, uh, Talion will attempt. Uh, I think at this point then what I can do, is go ahead and enter the fray. I think we're going to enter the fray with this one at this point because he is being kind of forced to fight. He was trying to flee uh, and now he's not able to do that. I think then uh, what's going to happen is he is on the move. Um, and so he is going to, first thing he's going to try to do is kind of punch it and use his skills then as a pilot to try to evade the enemy as best he can. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to roll plus edge then in this particular case. Uh, and his edge is a plus two. Um, so let's see how well we do on this. Uh, let's see, so, okay, so, all right, so four. It is a weak hit, okay, uh, but we are making progress, at least. I guess that's the best thing we can say. I think at this point, we are, I, yeah, we're going to take control. Uh, so our momentum wouldn't go up that high anyway. So he's definitely going to kind of take control. So he is able to kind of maneuver then uh, the ships around where he is now in the back of the pirates. Uh, so he's kind of flown around, kind of done uh, several different kind of maneuvers, uh, the, the Italian maneuver maybe. Uh, and he ends up then uh, behind the pirate ship uh, to try to, now he wants to disable them. And so he is going then uh, to... Uh, I think then what he wants to do is not necessarily take out their engines, but he does want to take out their weapons. So that's what he is going to be targeting. So he's going to be targeting their engines. Um, and so in that case, then uh, we're going to do a uh, strike since we want to roll plus edge. Again, his edge is plus two. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so that is four. That is a weak hit on a strike. Okay, so on a weak hit, make progress twice, but expose yourself to danger. You are in a bad spot. Okay, so we have then made uh, progress twice. At least we're, we're moving through. It's not the best of 
best of worlds, but we are making our progress. I think what he did is he made a bit of kind of a strafing run then uh, against the pirates. Uh, and by doing so, and he's able then to kind of, he says he meets his objective, However, though I think that's going to kind of overload then his, uh, his weapon systems for the moment. Uh, and so that is what's going to give them the pirates the opportunity to kind of edge things out. Now, I think then what they're going to attempt to do at this point, because they know they've got a, 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 pirate, a, a pilot with some skill on their hands, uh, is they are going to, uh, you know how in the kind of in cop movies you've got then you, uh, you hit the kind of the back end and make the other uh, car spin around. I think they're going to attempt the space version of this, kind of give him a bit of a bump, uh, maybe as a way of kind of puncturing then the atmosphere to kind of then force his ship to kind of go off of kilter a little bit as the initial stabilizers are not able to kind of write things up. So that's what they're going to attempt to do to kind of give a little bit of a, of a tap. So we are then going to be doing a clash. Uh, and so that is, uh, and it is going to be close quarters. So it is going to be rolling plus iron. All right. So it's plus iron. His iron then is at two. Okay. So that is, that one's cocked a little bit. So let me reroll this one. Uh, okay, either way though, it was definitely going to be a failure. So that is a miss. Your foes dominate this exchange. You stay in a bad spot and must pay the price. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, so um, let's see. I think then what that's going to mean is um, they, he is going to take some damage to his ship. Uh, so that goes down to three, that goes down. I think it's gonna be in that situation, how bad he was decimated. It's definitely gonna be going down to a two. All right, so he has a massive hit that's been taken to him. Uh, he has atmosphere that's kind of leaking out. He's not kind of sure what's going to happen. Uh, so he is going to uh, to kind of yell then at Brennan uh, to kind of go and uh, run and do what he can to try to repair the ship as best he can to try to get things back on course. But he is still, still definitely then having problems. I think then what's going to happen now is that the pirates are going to attempt then uh, kind of create a, try to board the thing at this point. Um, and so they're going to kind of ram, I think, into the ship uh, in order to then, I think the, the nose of their ship probably opens up a little bit and kind of collapse hold uh, in order to create kind of a boarding party then to attack into the ships. That's what they're trying to do, kind of maneuver themselves as kind of a ramming maneuver. Uh, so I think then what he's going to try to do is react under fire as a way of trying to blocking or divert with force. All right, so he sees them kind of coming in towards to, to kind of make that maneuver, that kind of kill shot then uh, in order to begin boarding him. And so what he's going to do is he's going to wait till kind of the last minute um, and then I think just as they're about to get in, he is going to do his best to kind of throw them off, kind of hard turn to the left or to the right or up or down, wherever, uh, in order to kind of break off then that little attacking mechanism that they have at the front of their ship. So uh, that is plus iron. Uh, his iron is plus two. So let's see how well he does on this roll. Okay, that is a seven. That is a weak hit. It's a weak hit. Um, but on a weak hit, then you succeed, but face a troublesome cost. Make a suffer move minus one. You stay in a bad spot. Okay, so I think then because he is then trying to um, uh, break away from them, uh, that's going to cause a little bit more damage to his ship yet again. All right, but they are not able to kind of do this. Uh, so the Ektakisi is not looking all that well, uh, but the engines are still running. They still have a chance. They still have an opportunity. So he is still in a bad spot. So they are still, uh, the pirates still have the initiative in this particular case. Um, I think then the pirates then have lost that opportunity to kind of board the way that they normally would do. How bad do the pirates want both the cargoes? I think it is, uh, they want it a lot. So I think it's highly likely that they want both to keep alive. Uh, so that's a 56, so yes. Uh, so they're not going to just try to sh outright uh, shoot and destroy the ship at this point, uh, even though it's giving them lots of trouble. So I think they're going to take one more aim at the engines to see what happens. Uh, and so that is going to be a clash at, uh, at distance. So that is roll plus edge. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to be plus two. Uh, so that is a six. That is another weak hit, but a weak hit mark progress, but you belt, dealt a counter blow or setback. You stay in a bad spot and must pay the price. However, though, we do then make one more set of progress against escaping uh, these particular pirates. Okay. Um, so, and do, 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 what happens though? Okay. You are dealt a counter blow or a setback. You stay in a bad spot. They've taken the engines out. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Um, so he is at, currently the Ektakisi is kind of dead in the water at this point. Uh, and so the pirates then are coming in to make their move. Uh, now, can at this point, can I take decisive action? Can I take decisive action when um, you are in a bad spot? 
Okay, if you're in control, check the result as normal. If you're in a bad spot, count a strong hit as a weak hit. I think that what he is going to do is, um, Italian is going to kind of play possum here. Um, and he is going to have, now that he sees that his engines are out, he's also then going to kind of drop his power down to kind of his lower levels as if they've, they've done something else to see what happens when the pirates kind of come in to then uh, somehow latch onto the ship or whatever. And then he's going to make that one last decisive action. So he's got it kind of planned out because, you know, he's an assassin. He's got plans within plans. He's got contingency plans, etc. And so these things have happened before, but he wants to then um, try to wait till they get a little bit closer. And I think then he has a system uh, to kind of shoot some sort of missile kind of at the last minute, kind of point blank range, not really able to aim or anything like that, but it's kind of one of his last desperate measures uh, when things are about to happen. So the pirates then are getting closer in order to do this. So he is going to take decisive action to try to stop that from happening. Uh, so he is at plus eight currently. Uh, so let's see how, what happens. Okay, so that is, I don't have any momentum to spend, um, but however, that is a, uh, a weak hit on a weak hit. Um, a weak hit X is a miss. Oh no, okay, so on a miss, you are defeated and your objective is lost. Pay the price, oh my God, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so he fires then his missile. Do we have anything? I don't think we don't have, because we have no momentum whatsoever. Because we're at zero. Okay. Um, so then I think what's basically going to happen is his last ditch effort kind of fails. Uh, and, ooh. All right. So the pirates then arrive and they definitely then kind of board the Ektikisi. Um, and I think then, because it says we failed, we failed our objective. Uh, it doesn't happen. So I think in that particular case, then uh, what happens is uh, they take both Brennan. He didn't know that Brennan was someone that they wanted, but he takes Brennan and they also then take the object that uh, Talion had initially be came here to pick up. Ooh. Okay, but then they leave the ship for dead because it's just kind of floating in space. So they just kind of leave it alone. So let's see what happens. Uh, is this is uh, gonna have to, oh man. Okay, so we kind of failed in our, in our test. So let's see, we need to make them. Okay, so when the goal is lost, then we have to make a quest move of uh, forsaking our vow. Okay, um, so on forsake your vow. Uh, when you renounce your quest, betray your promise, or the goal is lost to you, which we, we just saw, that's what happens, your goal is lost to you, then envision the impact of the failure and choose one or more as appropriate to the nature of the vow. Uh, any allies who share this vow may also envision a cause. So you're demoralized, you're dispirited, a connection loses faith, you must abandon the path or resource. Um, someone else pays a price, someone else takes advantage, your reputation suffers. I think then basically kind of what's happened and where we're currently at is Talion is just kind of adrift in space. Uh, he has lost then uh, the thing that he came to pick up. Uh, he also lost then his ability uh, to, uh, um, to secure those resources. Uh, so I think then definitely then his spirit has uh, taken a hit in this. Um, and so that's gonna go down and he's in a bad spot. His ship is floating in space. He has no power. It's kind of all been shut off. Okay, uh, but they have then kind of left him in peace at this moment. Talion is kind of slowly kind of coming out of the uh, the stupor that he was in from being knocked out when the ship was boarded. And he does this because there's kind of this clacking that is going off, a uh, warning about a low amount of oxygen uh, in the cabin. Uh, and so he kind of stumbles up and kind of uh, takes stock of where things at. Uh, then he hears then the call of what's happening. Um, and so really the first thing he's got to do is he's got to fix the ship because the ship is hurt pretty bad at this point. Um, and so he needs then to repair the Ektikisi because uh, it's just kind of, as far as he knows, it's just kind of sitting adrift. Uh, the atmosphere is escaping out of the ship. Uh, and so he's definitely then going to be needing to do a repair. Uh, so when you make repairs to your vehicle module, mechanical companions, or other devices, a situation and roll. Okay, if you make your own repairs or direct companion to make repairs, roll plus wits. Okay, obtain repairs from someone, not an ally. Okay, so he's definitely, he's kind of doing this on his own. I think he's probably calling out uh, for Brennan, uh, but uh, unbeknownst to him at this particular moment, Brennan has been taken away by the pirate. So he is kind of all alone then in this particular situation. So he is doing it on his own. So it is plus wits. Um, so we just got to figure out and see how he ends up doing, don't we? All right, so his wits is plus one and we get, five okay um, 
that is a miss, okay? And on a miss, what happens? On a miss, the repairs are not made and the situation worsens, uh, pay the price. So I think then uh, probably what's happening then is he's using then some of the, um, uh, some of the supplies and uh, it's just not working out for him at this point. Um, and I think though uh, the situation is obviously getting kind of worse because of the fact that he is now dealing with uh, loss of atmosphere, loss of oxygen, so he has got to get this done. Um, I think then probably what he is going to do um, to kind of be able to kind of make some repairs because it's still got to happen. He's just sitting there, he's floating in space. Something has to happen, something he's got to fix. So I think what he's going to do is he is going to use his, he has a support vehicle, which is a hover bike. Um, now, I don't think there's necessarily anything in here about, in the rules about how to kind of make this work, but I think then he's going to be kind of stripping parts then off of this, of what everything's going to be able to work to make then, uh, at least to get the atmosphere kind of situated and put back together in the ship. So he is going to uh, try to do this uh, one more time to see what happens. Um, and let's see what he can do. Oh. Okay, um, so yeah, so he has caused uh, problems to his uh, hover bike in order to try to make these repairs, um, but that was not seemed to be enough. Um, and as the oxygen kind of escapes then from his ship, uh, he begins to kind of fade back into unconsciousness from the lacks of oxygen. What happens to Talion? Talion is kind of adrift then in space. He is unconscious because of the lacks of oxygen. We know then that he was heading towards the Maelstrom as kind of a way to kind of hide out from the pilots when all of this started to happen. And I think that his kind of momentum uh, is going to kind of continue him in that general direction. Now, one of the things that's kind of established about the Maelstrom itself is there are gravitational kind of eddies, and so it has its own kind of gravitational pull. And so I think that's kind of pulling him into that. And, there's a lot of debris that's floating around it here, and so Italian ship, uh, the uh, Ektikisi, is has every potential now, I think, at this point, to become uh, just kind of a part of the uh, the wreckage, the drift to be kind of picked up, the salvage to be picked up uh, by later people. Now, I think the question is going to be, um, is someone going to come across this ship at a fortuitous moment? Um, or is this really the end then of uh, our time then with Talia Archer? Um, let's leave it up to the dice. Let's leave it up then to fate uh, to see what happens. I'm gonna say, because I want the best for Italian, so let's say that it is likely. That is a 38. I believe 38 does mean a yes. So let me just confirm that real quick. On oh, no, a likely, it's a 26 or greater. Okay. So, Italian ship is just kind of beginning to kind of float in the debris field of the Maelstrom. Um, and then I think it's not going to be really kind of a large salvage operation. I think there is going to be an individual, uh, just kind of a scavenger. Uh, who then is kind of moving about and comes across then uh, Talion's ship. So who is this scavenger going to be? Uh, so the scavenger is 41. Uh, so they are uh, Isaac, give me a last name, Isaac 55, um, Zhang, Isaac Zhang. Okay, so Isaac Zhang, who we've just decided is going to be kind of a, a scavenger comes across him and uh, let's see what is something about him he is a 94 and a 27 so 94 violent and cunning violent and cunning okay so he is coming across then uh, Talion's ship uh, just kind of floating about for all that all that Isaac knows is that this ship is merely some salvage that is kind of floating around ready to kind of be picked up um, so I think then he is kind of attaching himself to the ship he's probably got a kind of a smaller type of thing um, I don't like I said I don't see him as kind of a, a big kind of operation so it's probably kind of a small ship that just goes in and probably kind of takes out computer computer parts computer opponents this and that kind of the the, the smaller pieces and then kind of sells them trying to kind of make some money um, so Isaac then is kind of entering into the, uh, the Ektikisi and Isaac is going to be heading towards the cockpit because that's where a lot of the good stuff is at. And so he is heading in that direction to see what it is that he is able to salvage. Uh, and he comes across then, um, he comes across then Talia. No, he is, he is violent, but he is also cunning. 
Um, and so if there's an opportunity to get some insider information, he sees then that this uh, ship had been attacked uh, and he's probably guessing that it's done by pirates. So he is going to then, I think, take Talion in uh, in order to kind of provide him with uh, a little bit a little bit of aid, uh, just in order to kind of figure out then if there's anything better that might be out there. Because I think the way that Isaac looks at it, if nothing else, this guy, keep him still a little bit injured, not on his best side of things, just toss him out of an airlock. Where we pick up then, I think, is I, uh, Talion is going to be then um, kind of in the, uh, probably a small bunk, um, on Isaac's little scavenger ship. Uh, and he kind of wakes up, he has a bit of a headache. Um, and he sees then kind of this uh, uh, crutchy older gentleman that's just kind of staring at him, um, probably drinking some coffee, I would imagine. It's kind of the way that I kind of picture it. So uh, Talion just kind of wakes his, he just kind of, because he has a massive headache because of the uh, oxygen deprivation. Oh, so he just kind of rubs his temples a little bit and kind of tries to get uh, get himself situated, kind of looks around, everything's kind of a bit fuzzy, a bit hazy. Uh, he sees in this figure then of this kind of older person that's over on the side. He kind of, he, he focuses his attention, try to get a little bit of better view. And so he looks at him um, and a person in the Italian would normally just kind of uh, kind of pass over and not think and not have a second thought about uh, um, kind of well, I guess Italian would consider kind of a bit of a beggar beggar kind of look on him and so he's just kind of staring at him but uh, the older person is just kind of sitting there and just kind of sipping his coffee well, it's about time you finally woke up yes yes yeah I had to uh, spend some resources you know, make sure that you were okay uh Talley at this point is he's just he's a little bit out of it uh but he's like oh i'm i'm so sorry but yes thank you I, of, of course i'll i'll re i'll repay whatever whatever you expended in, in trying to help me but i, I gotta know where, where is my ship well yeah, he was kind of a little bit on the lost side of things uh, uh, I kind of kept the recordings, but you know, my own mind, it's a little on the, uh, uh, little, not as good as it used to be, so I, it's difficult to remember these things, but was, was there anything, uh, you know, really that you needed to go back for? I mean, it is just a ship after all. Uh, well, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit, a bit of the way that I make my livelihood, it's kind of important to me. Uh, well, uh, well, you know, they say sometimes people with information, uh, can come at a price, and uh, I don't know. My, this old, my Italian is definitely kind of getting the understanding of, of the kind of the direction that this is kind of going in, um, and so Italian kind of kind of takes a moment. He's kind of restocking of things, um, and he knows then uh, he does have access to funds, uh, not necessarily immediately on him, um, but he does have access to some funds as part of his, you know, his backstory of being kind of an assassin, being able to kind of get in different places as necessary. So that kind of part he's not too concerned about. Uh, it's the ship that he wants to get back, his mode of transportation, uh, get the, the goods that he has presumably then lost. Um, well, let me ask you then, uh, oh, I forgot, what, 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 what is your name? Sorry, I'm, I'm Talion. People around here call me old Isaac. Because, uh, one, I'm old, and the other, that's my name. Okay, uh, old Isaac, uh, well, what is it that I can kind of help you with? What would make it worth your while to be able to kind of remember it? And actually, I would be even interested in if you could kind of be able to, to take me there, or even to kind of uh, uh, haul me back in some way back to the station where I can get repairs done. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's a long way out there, you know, so... Uh, and so I think then uh, he is going to quote him a price, uh, whether it is one that's completely out of the league. Let's find out then what uh, the Oracle says. I'm going to say it's a 50-50. He's going to shoot for the moon, I think, this Isaac. Uh, and with a 57, that is, yes, he is going to shoot for the moon. Uh, huh. 50, 50,000 credits just for a, just for a trip out and a, and a tug back to the station. That's, <laughs> that's a bit hefty to kind of come up with. Um, is there any way that we might be able to kind of negotiate a little bit of a better price? Oh, well, I, I suppose it's possible. Okay, so then we definitely then may need to <laughs> kind of bargain with this individual. See, I think then what um, Talon is going to do is he is going to kind of barter. So um, Talon is kind of uh, taking his eye around the place. Um, and I think then 
you know, he's he's got some street smarts, and so he's starting to kind of put two and two together. This guy is definitely um, some sort of scavenger. Uh, and so if he has sent something to offer, uh, maybe they can kind of make some sort of trade. Um, and so I think then uh, what Talon is going to offer is this. Well, I can't come up with the 50,000 that you're asking for. Um, but what I can do is I can give you uh, 10,000 credits. And then I also then have some, and he kind of takes a moment. I have some munitions that you might be interested in. Oh, really? That is quite, that would be quite a find. Yes, yeah, we've got problems with pirates around here, so munitions would come in, in very handy. So maybe, yes. Okay, so let's see if that is something he is interested in doing. So we are trying then to uh, barter with him. So let's do, uh, that's roll plus heart, okay? And I believe his heart is a, please tell me it's decent. It's a one, it's a one, it's a one. Okay, so let's see how he does with his bartering skills. <sighs> this is not my rolls today. Okay, um, so on a miss, they refuse or make a demand which costs you greatly. Well, if we're going to do this, I need all of your explosive munitions. No keeping any of them back. You must give them all to me. Uh, well, I mean, Isaac has Talion between a rock and a hard place, so that is going to be what he decides to do, uh, is he is going to then say, he's going to accept that uh, 10,000 gold credits, plus then basically all of the munitions of his missiles that he has um, as a part of it. So Isaac then is going to um, take then um, Talion to the ship um, and is going to then begin the process then of uh, unloading his munitions and his weapons. So as he makes their way out there, I've got something in my mind. Let's see if it happens or not. Is it yes or no? Okay. When he arrives, his ship is not at the coordinates. Thanks for joining me once again uh, on this second episode of uh, Reforged Imperium. Um, again, if you noticed anything with the, uh, uh, the rules that I might have got wrong, uh, please let me know. Uh, I think this game went uh, pretty smoothly in terms of, of rules and all of that, that there wasn't a lot of things that I, that I noticed that I missed. But again, I can kind of make those uh, mistakes. But anyway, if you notice anything, please put them down in the comments because as always, we all learn together. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. And until next time, uh, we'll find out what happens with Talion and his now missing ship. Thanks for joining me.